Right then, how are we all doing? So, this one's about the DJI kind of security issues and what's interesting about it and what's coming to drones and it's kind of bizarre. So, what we've got is we have this thing in America where DJI there's a there's a considered security risk basically if someone does some critical infrastructure flying they then take a load of photos and stuff and then if they happen to sync their flight data and you have to tell it to sync your flight data you sync your flight data with the servers in China the risk is the Chinese government will say to DJI we, we want that flight log and there will be some low res dash images that could be included in that data set and that's that's the perceived risk with the DJI that's the perceived security risk the fact that China can go to DJI the government and just go give us those logs and DJI will roll over and go yes here you go because that's how China works. It's all for the benefit of China. Everything is all about one. They work as one. So that's the perceived risk uh, with flying DJI drones near critical infrastructure. If you don't sync the data, and you don't have an internet connection, obviously the flight logs and the data can't go to China. But because you can press a little thing that's a sync it, it could possibly happen. So if you never take your drone near a Wi-Fi hotspot or anything else, of course, you, you, there's no way that data can go anywhere. Now, we're going to look at Remote ID next, and people are going to go, he's still banging on about Remote ID. Now, what Remote ID does is, uh, under the current YASA and FAA, which the FAA, this is hilarious, by the way, I know none of you will ever watch this, but this is how stupid remote ID becomes as a security risk or a really bad idea. Same for the UK, same for Europe, any country that comes up with remote ID. Now, let me explain. So you've got these drones and remember, if I was going to do something bad, if I was a bad activist, first of all, remember, bad activist, if I was going to run drugs to a prison, for example, I wouldn't put remote ID on my drone. Just bear that in mind. A bad person won't put remote ID on their drone. Now everyone's going to go, but that means the drone in the sky, that's got to be the bad one. And if you consider one that you can see is the bad one, does that mean there's a security risk of that one bad one? Well, let's flip this a minute. So all the other good drones are transponding or transmitting because they must do so they're all transmitting remote ID now this means that anyone else you can see a drone in the sky and go that's this operator so the police will have to have it because if they don't they that basically means that the police can't not have re remote ID on their drones because otherwise people will look and go we can't see that drone we've got to report it and that'll get reported. Now, someone clever is going to go, ah, but the police will already know there's a drone there, so they'll, they'll have to know it's theirs. Well, no, you can't assume that. That assumption will be incorrect. So you can't assume that. Then you've got the people that make drone in a box. So we've got drone in a box, and drone in a box is meant to do security around sites. And, you know, the idea is around construction sites and things like that. Drone in a box will be able to put on site and it'll deploy when it senses someone's doing something or it's going out on patrol around the fence. Well, that's great because if it's got remote ID as it must do to be legal, I've just got to watch it where it is as a bad guy and go, oh look, the drone's over that the other side of the campus. It'll be over back here. I've got five minutes to get through the fence or I've got five minutes to do what I want because I can see it live. So thank you for that. That's really good. It gets better. Next, you have the next part of the industry. Now, critical infrastructure. Now, this is why the FAA got its knickers in a twist. 
because of the way DJI syncs its data in China. And you can kind of understand that to a degree. However, this is now the curveball. Remote ID will tell us what operator is doing what job. So remote ID, that data is going to be pumped out by your drone. We know that you're inspecting that oil refinery, for example, just for example. Or you're doing some critical infrastructure on a Navy base, for example. What we now know is, we now know your operator ID because legally you have to transmit that. There's no exceptions, no nothing, because the, of course the biggest security risk is knowing not knowing what's out there. That's considered the biggest security risk. So we now know that company X has inspected that nuclear power station, that oil refinery. And people are going, yes, but they're not sinking their logs in China. No, they're not. What they're doing is they're taking their drone back to the office, they're taking the data, they're putting it onto their computers. Is it ever heard of anywhere that countries hack businesses? Is it ever heard of, unheard of, that that could possibly happen? There's no way at all that the remote ID that's been transmitted, you've got the company ID, you now know what the company was doing, they were at location X. There's no way that anyone could hack that company to steal that data. That cannot happen. AstraZeneca, they were never hacked to try and get details on the COVID cure, for example. That would never happen in a month of Sundays, would it? Hmm. The problem is everyone thinks that remote ID would be about spotting the bad guy. And therefore, the security risks because of that are reduced. Well, they're not, because the bad person who's doing the run, drug run isn't ever going to put remote ID on the drone. They were never going to do it in the first place. And therefore, that drone that's flying, you wouldn't know about it anyway, nine times out of ten. Nine times out of ten, you'd never even know it existed. Only if they come up with a problem would you even begin to know about it. So you'd have no way to track it anyway. However, you're going to broadcast by mandate, everyone's going to broadcast their operator ID. Therefore, you know what the company is. You will then see what installations they've been doing. You could literally say, well, this company, X, and you know, it could be something like a big construction company in the UK, Balfour BT, for example. You can see where all their drones have been flying and they do critical infrastructure. All you have to do then is go, uh, we need all that data. How are we going to get it? We could just hack the company. And trust me, anyone that says, oh, that's not going to happen. Just see my previous comments about companies that got hacked. It, it's more likely that what's going to happen is companies are just going to get hacked more. That's all it's doing. You're just going to shift the ability to go for China, for example, just as an example, by the way, a rogue state of some kind where the files are synced to. Instead of them being able to go, give us those, give us that information and the said drone company going, oh, here you go. Instead, what will happen is they'll be able to monitor what's going on in another country via remote ID really easily and go, oh, yeah, um, that company is doing a lot of flying around critical for critical infrastructure. They'll know that because Remote ID has to put the drone's location, transmitting all the time in real time. Your operator ID, so they know the company because they'll be able to look it up and they'll be able to go, oh, really? Ooh. Well, they've done that over the past six months. I'll tell you what, let's, let's speak to the, uh, the hacking department Guys, we want everything off their service, please. And anyone that thinks that that could not happen lives in La La Land. So, yeah, this little bit of a reality check for anyone that thinks remote ID is good for any country, for their security, they need to think again. And that's just my little rant on it. Um, I'm sure people far further up the smart ladder than me have gone, this is going to be a problem. Um, 
you know, any company that does critical infrastructure, you're going to have to beef up your web servers or your or your connection to the outside world. You need to beef it up <laughs> really well. So yeah. Anyway, a bit of a a bit of a rant and a bit of poke at all the holes in the older a remote ID for security reasons, just because. Um, so flying everyone, have a good one.